It is really easy to make your own perfume if you follow this tutorial. I'll break everything down into really simple, easy to follow steps, including how to choose your own essential oils, talking you through the top, middle and base notes, things like ratios and how to combine different scents together. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to make your very own signature perfume. Hi guys and welcome to Hola Elise. I'm Elise and today I'm going to show you how to make your very own custom perfume. If you're new to making perfume and you're wondering where to start, the first thing we need to do is to gather our essential oils. So these are all the essential oils that I have and seeing as it's a natural perfume recipe, we're going to be using essential oils as the base of our fragrance. Essential oils are basically just a condensed plant essence. They're incredibly potent oils extracted from plants and they're also able to retain not just the scent but also a lot of the benefits of the plant itself. Essential oils come in as many different varieties as there are plants so you're never really going to have to worry about running out and you'll have plenty to make all the sort of perfume fragrances that you want. I know I make a lot of DIYs which is why you should believe me when I say it's always best to start with what you have available rather than rushing out to buy anything. So once you've gathered all the essential oils that you have we're going to separate them into three categories top notes, middle notes and base notes. So now you might be wondering what exactly are top, middle and base notes when it comes to essential oils. So this group here are base notes. So a good way to think of this is kind of like a relationship. Base notes would be considered a long term relationship. Base notes are complex and intense and their smells can actually evolve and develop over time. They also last the longest out of all three notes but they do tend to be more expensive. So something like a vanilla or a frankincense would be typical base notes. Moving on to our middle notes, I would say these are more like a summer fling than a long term relationship. This is actually where the bulk of most essential oils fit, so they're quite warm and comforting smells but they don't really last as long as a base note. So scents that fall into this category are things like lavender or cinnamon, those would be typical middle notes. And finally the top note category are kind of like the hidden and quidditch of essential oils. <laughs> I would change, I would change the analogy but I feel like I've gone too far with this relationship one. <laughs> Top notes are very intense and strong but their affections are definitely fleeting, they don't hang around for very long and because of this they tend to be the cheapest out of all essential oils so you can find most of the citrus fruits in this area, a lot of floral smells, things that have quite a big impact but out of all three categories, top notes tend to last the shortest. It is also worth noting that these categories aren't iron tight, essential oils can fit into multiple categories, but this is just kind of like a rough guide. Now a good perfume will have a mixture of all three notes. So at this stage you might notice that you have more of one category than you do another and that's perfectly fine. The only thing I would say is that if you're lacking in the base note category, as in you don't have any essential oils that fit into this, I would recommend going out and buying one or two. No more than that, you really don't need a lot of it. But for our perfume to last longer and have a rich depth, you are gonna wanna make sure that you have at least one base note in here. So once we've got all of our essential oils organized, we can go into deciding what sort of fragrance we want our essential oils to have. For my perfume, I'm using vanilla and ylang ylang base note essential oils. Drops aren't the most accurate method of measuring out essential oils as they can vary, but it's fine for making small amounts. I'd recommend using a pipette or a very sensitive scale if you plan on making natural perfumes regularly. We'll need a total of 30 drops for the vanilla essential oil. I'll use 14 drops of Ylang Ylang. It has a stronger scent than the vanilla so as not to overpower my perfume I'll be using less. Moving on to the middle notes, I'll be using bergamot and geranium. I'll measure 18 drops of bergamot essential oil. Again, bergamot has a more subtle fragrance, so I'll need more. For the geranium, I'll only need to use 6 drops. And finally, we have our top notes. These will be the first fragrances you pick up on when you use your perfume. I'm using sweet orange and grapefruit for a citrus thing. Measure out 6 drops each for both essential oils. Once you've measured out all of your essential oils, mix everything together. So you're all set to make a perfume, you've got your essential oils together, but how do you decide on a fragrance? It can be really overwhelming, especially if you're new to making perfumes, to know which fragrance to pick. But fortunately, there are a couple tricks that will help you narrow down what type of fragrance you want. 
So there are actually a few categories of fragrances that most perfumes fit into. Once you identify the types of fragrance that you like, it's then a lot easier to find your own signature blend. I find it helpful just to narrow it down to these five. So we have sweet, spicy, woody, fruity and herbal. So if you like sweet smells, you can think of things like vanilla and rose. Those might be the types of essential oils that you want to gravitate towards. On the other hand, you have things like spicy. So you've got your cloves, your cinnamons, your cardamons. I know it sounds like we're cooking, but those are actually fragrances that you can definitely use in your perfumes. So the woody fragrances do tend to be used more in men's colognes, so things like sandalwood, pine, eucalyptus, but don't let that put you off. To make a well-rounded perfume, it's really good to have a multitude of smells, and including some woody fragrances can really provide a kind of depth and a complexity to your perfumes. So don't just discard them, you're not going to smell like a men's locker room, everything in moderation. Fruity is kind of self-explanatory, it's things like orange, lemon, those types of fruit smells. Herbal smells are quite heavily associated with medicinal or massage therapy type things, so you do want to be careful when it comes to using herbal essential oils. Just go easy on the herbal ones, you don't really want to smell like my herbal bath salts. Which, by the way, if you haven't checked that out, you can click that video above because they are amazing, but not necessarily the type of smell that I want for my perfume. So out of those five categories, if you know the type of smell that you're going to gravitate towards, that will help you narrow down the essential oils that you want to use in your perfume. Considering we're kind of in between spring and summer at the moment, I'm going to make something seasonal and go for like a fruity flower type vibe. There's no real reason, I just figured why not. Um, you can follow along with my own measurements, or if you plan on making your own scent, then obviously just follow along with my steps and substitute it for whatever essential oils that you're using. So if you're new to making perfumes, as a guideline I'd recommend picking no more than one to two essential oils per category. As I mentioned we do not want to smell like a herbal tea shop so less is definitely more but of course if you're experienced at making your own perfumes then you can kind of figure out what goes together but you could have a total of six different essential oils and that will be more than enough to create a beautiful perfume. So once you've figured out what essential oils you're going to use, let's move on to deciding how much of each you're going to need to make your perfume. So right about now you might be wondering, how do we actually formulate our perfume? And the first thing to decide is how much you want to make. Now if this is the first time you're making this fragrance, then I always recommend that you start small because the last thing you want to do is to use up half of your essential oils on a fragrance that you don't even like. I'll be making about 20 milliliters, which is enough to fit into this bottle. We dilute our essential oil mixture with the carrier oil. So even though our final perfume is going to be 20 milliliters, we're not actually going to need all of that to be essential oils. Roughly speaking, a lot of people formulate their perfumes to be about 20% essential oils and 80% carrier oils. So if we're going to make 20 milliliters of perfume, we're only going to need four milliliters of essential oils. And we've already selected the ones that we're going to use. So the next step is to work out how much of each essential oil that we actually need. Now you can decide how much of each oil you want to use, but there are general guidelines that definitely help, particularly if you are a beginner to making your own perfume. Generally speaking, we need about 15-20% to 20 of our top notes. For our middle notes, we need 30-40%. to 40 And finally, the bulk of our fragrance will be made up with our base notes, and that's anywhere between 45-55%. to 55%. Now this is just a rough guideline, but for my blend, I'll be using 15% top notes, 30% middle notes, and 55% base notes. So in terms of drops, I'll need 12 drops for our top notes, 24 drops for our middle notes, and 44 drops for our base notes. So once you've decided on the essential oils that you're going to use and you've measured them out, pour everything into a small glass container. The essential oils that we mixed together earlier is a concentrated fragrance blend for our natural perfume. This isn't actually a perfume yet. We'll need to add a couple more oils to make it into a perfume. So here we have our four milliliters of our essential oil blend. And the catch is we kind of need to let this marinate. So the thing about smells and fragrances is that they're very complex and they need time to mingle and to get to know one another before they're ready to be used as perfumes. So once you've mixed your essential oils together, the best thing to do is to leave it in a place away from sunlight for about a week. I know it already smells incredible, so this seems really unnecessary, but trust me, this is how you make an amazing perfume that will smell even better than anything that you can buy in a store. We need to dilute our essential oil fragrance before we can apply it as a perfume. To do this, I'm using 16 grams of almond oil as a carrier oil. Here's more about carrier oils and how to pick the right one for your perfume. 
So the thing about essential oils is that they're incredibly potent and while that makes it a great choice for making our perfumes, it does mean that we can't apply it directly to our skin. Essential oils always need to be diluted before they come in contact with your skin otherwise they can cause irritation and that's why we need a carrier oil. Carrier oil include things like almond oil, coconut oil, sunflower oil, olive oil, jojoba oil. If you're ever in doubt, a carrier oil will typically come in a much larger quantity than say something like essential oil that come in small bottles. Now you can use whatever carrier oil that you would like, although I would recommend that you use some that obviously don't have a very strong scent, so I wouldn't use something like coconut oil or olive oil because we are of course making perfume and you don't want those sorts of scents to kind of mess with our perfume fragrance but other than that choose any oil that you know agrees with your skin. The final oil that we'll need to make sure that our perfume lasts as long as possible is vitamin E oil. We only need a small amount of vitamin E oil to work as an antioxidant to hopefully stop our perfume from turning rancid. I only need one gram of vitamin E oil to work as an effective antioxidant for our perfume. Once everything's measured out, combine the essential oil fragrance with the almond and vitamin E oil mix. You should always try to use glass bottles whenever your products contain essential oils. However, generally speaking, it's better to use tinted or amber coloured glass rather than clear glass. This is to limit the amount of sunlight that reaches your perfume and therefore help it last longer. I'm using clear glass so that it's easier for you to see. I'd also recommend using containers that match the amount of perfume that you've made. This further prevents oxidization of your perfume. These little glass bottles, other than being see-through, are perfect for travel size and they also have rollable tops for easy application. And of course, if you use a standard glass perfume bottle, there are beautiful options to choose from, like vintage or delicate glass designs. This one has a 50mm capacity. So yeah, we're gonna need about a month. <laughs> I know you guys probably hate me right now, but I said it was easy to make your own perfume. I never said that it was fast. We kinda need to let our essential oils get to know our carrier oil, and I know this smells so good, but honestly, this is the last time. There's a whole bunch of science and smells that goes into this, which is why it makes such a difference. But trust me, I've tried using it straight away and I've also left it for a month to see if I can tell the difference. And you really can. I don't know what it is about the way that the essential oils mix with everything, but it smells heavenly after a month. So after a month, your perfume will finally be ready and boy, oh boy, is it worth it. If you're someone who makes a lot of DIYs or you've followed my channel for a while, you know that I regularly rely on using essential oils. And for this video, I tried to challenge myself by not buying any new essential oils and only using what I had available. I really do recommend that you only buy what you need and you try to reuse ingredients as much as possible. If you're looking for a way to get the most out of the ingredients you already have, then why not check out my natural skincare playlist as well as my mini DIYs. They try to make use of ingredients that you already have available and that way you're not spending more money than you need. And another way to use your essential oils is actually in a homemade air freshener. Click the tutorial above to see how to make your own reed diffusers. It is the perfect way to experiment with your essential oils to try and find fragrances that you like. So I do hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if you end up making your own perfume and subscribe to my channel with the notifications bell because I'll also be bringing out even more content and I've got some floral waters coming up which will be absolutely perfect for summer. Thanks for watching. There was a lot to cover in this one, but for more in-depth tutorials, check out my beginner's lotion DIY.